What is going on everybody and welcome to part three of the reinforcement learning as well as Q learning since that's what we're starting with tutorial series. In the last video we created a well we got the mountain car to get up the hill basically using Q learning which is cool but we did it with a bunch of parameters here or constants that I just set because I knew it would work. But in the real world, <laughs> you're going to have to figure these values out. And the way that you're going to do that can't possibly be watching every episode and seeing does it work. Because, you know, showing, let's say, even with 25,000 episodes, showing every 2,000, that's still not a statistically significant sampling <laughs> of, of how your model's doing. So, so we have to find a better way. And one thing that we can do, just tr a simple metric to track, is just simply the reward. So a per episode reward tracking system is probably enough for most like basic operations. Now, for really complicated environments, you might need to do a little more, but uh, you're not gonna use basic Q learning for a complicated environment anyway. So uh, with that, let me just show you guys one way you could track these, these metrics over time. Now, there's a million ways you could do this. It's just a simple programming task, honestly, but it is something we definitely need to do. So I'm just going to show one example, and then after that example, I'm going to show you guys um, something kind of cool with the Q tables uh, at the end as a just a slight bonus. So uh, anyway, the first thing we're going to do here is just come underneath Q table. Also, mm, let's change episodes. Let's do, uh, let's just do 2,000 episodes show every 500 episodes. Uh, that'll just help us to get through this uh, this year. So uh, the first thing that we're going to do is just underneath Q table. Let's just create uh, a couple of new whoops, a couple of new values. I meant to just <laughs> zoom in a little bit there. So uh, first of all, we're going to have episode rewards. This will just be a list that contains uh, each episode's reward, just as a list. Uh, and then we're going to have an aggregate, aggregate ep rewards dictionary. And this dictionary is going to track uh, the episode number, basically. Uh, then we're going to have the average. And then we'll have the min. And then we'll have <laughs> pep8 <eight> troubles. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll have max. <clears throat> okay, so this is gonna, this will just be a dictionary that tracks episode numbers. So this will just serve as like an x, uh, uh, yeah, the x-axis for a graph, basically. Uh, the average, this will be the trailing average. So you almost think of it like a, it's not a moving average, but it's the average for any given window. So every 500 episodes, for example, this will average over time. So as our model improves, average should go up. Uh, minimum, this is just going to be tracking for every show, every what was the worst model we had. So, um, so, so basically, it's just, what's the worst? That's, that's not a hard concept. <laughs> okay, max, <laughs> what was the best one? So why do we want these? Well, the average might actually be going up, uh, but the minimum or the worst performing model is still in the dump. And so you might have cases where you actually prefer that the worst model is still somewhat decent than to have a highest average or something like that. So this is just barely getting into it. This is, you know, what you're going to actually be looking for or trying to optimize for is going to vary depending on what kind of task you're attempting to achieve. So I'm just going to keep it fairly simple here uh, and just go with that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come down uh, into the episode loop here and we're going to track episode. So uh, underscore reward, we're going to say that equals zero. Then we're going to come down to the iteration of steps, uh, which is here. Uh, and then we get a reward here. And what we want to do is add that reward. So episode underscore reward plus equals reward. Uh, then what we want to do, what's your deal? Uh, I guess because we're just not using it. Yeah, undefined name. Episode, wait. Whoa, epi oh, we, sp <laughs> we typoed episode reward, ep episode, episode reward, okay, coming down here, episode reward, plus equals reward, phenomenal. Okay, so that will add to episode reward every time, and then basically at the end of the episode, what we'd like to do is append episode reward to ep rewards. So we'll come to the very end of this loop, 
we'll come back here. And the first thing that we're going to say is ep underscore ro ep rewards. I don't know if my keyboard's dying or what. I'm pretty sure I didn't make that typo. Uh, ep rewards dot append, although eps reward episode rewards is a little hard to explain with a keyboard issue but anyway app rewards dot append um we want to append that episode reward so the total reward at the very end what do we want to do so then the next thing we're going to say is if not episode uh episode modulo show every um and that for just for the that's the same as saying if episode modulo show every double equals zero. So if it doesn't equal zero, so you can kind of shorten this just by saying if not episode modulo show every. Basically, it just means every show every do this thing. <laughs> so I can't tell you how many times in Python I need to perform a task like this. And it's kind of unfortunate that this is the like industry standard. It would, all, it would be kind of nice to have some sort of way to be like, ev like every. Like, wouldn't that be a nice statement in Python? Every. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Something like that. Anyway, make it happen, guys. Uh, if not episode show every. So now what we want to do is we actually want to build. Uh, we're going to work on our dictionary. So basically, first thing we're going to do is calculate the average reward and that's going to be equal to the sum of our episode re ep underscore rewards there we go it'll be the sum of ep rewards minus the show every colon and then divided by and i know some people are going to be like why don't you just divide by show every well <laughs> In this case, sum, like this minus show every colon just means like the last, let's say, 500. But if the list is only 300 long and we do the last 500, it's still only going to be 300 long either way. We shouldn't run into that as a problem. But just in case, I'm going to instead say the len of ep rewards minus show every. Cool. So that gives us our average reward, and now we're ready to actually populate that uh, dictionary. So it was like aggregate ep rewards, and then basically we're gonna have um, four things that we're gonna do. First of all, the episode, that's just gonna be equal to, or not equal to, we're gonna say append episode, episode. And then I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna copy, pasta, 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 average, min, and max, and so here, we're going to append the average. Then here, I'm gonna copy and paste this ep rewards minus show every colon thing. Paste, paste, and this one will be, what was that, min? So the minimum of that value. And then here, we're going to say max. Cool, beautiful. So now we've built uh, this dictionary. The next thing that would be useful possibly is to print an F string. Um, so we can just, just for this specific episode, we could print like all of these things. So we could say uh, episode colon uh, and then average colon uh, min colon and then max colon. And then we'll just copy and paste into here. Oh, oh, not cut, copy, please. Thank you, thank you. Uh, min, max, so copy this, paste, and then do the same thing for max here. Copy, paste, beautiful. Okay, so that'll give us some, some metrics like as it's training for us so we can kind of see how things are going besides just seeing the simple replay. Cause like I said, that's just probably not gonna be enough. Uh, now at the very end, we're going to graph it. So at the very tippity top, we're going to import matplotlib.pyplot as pltizzle. And then we're going to come down to the bottom again. And um, I guess we can close the environment. We, that shouldn't be a problem. So we'll do it here. Plt dot, uh, plt.plot. And then we want to plot basically all three of these combinations. So basically it'll be the x will always be uh, the episode. 
Uh, and then we'll do AVG, and then we're gonna say label equals AVG. And then I'm gonna copy this, paste, paste, and then we'll do min, min, we'll do max, max, and uh, then we'll do a plt.legend, and we'll say the location here is four, and then finally plt.show, and for the location, that just that you can kind of pick where you want the legend to go. And I'm going to put it in four, which just means the lower right. So in theory, everything should be going up over time. So hopefully the lower right isn't in the way. If it's in the way, we, we didn't do very well anyways. So, so anyway, we'll save that. Uh, and what I want to do is open up a command line, Python Q learning three. We'll get that at least started. Um, I'm going to move this like here so we can hopefully see the metrics up. Oh, shoot is what I was going to say. <sighs> List index out of range. App rewards, app rewards. Do we not append? Uh, app rewards dot append episode reward. We are appending. Uh, we've, we've must have done something stupid. Episode reward equals zero. Episode reward plus equals reward at the very end ep rewards dot append episode rewards uh, then hold on um, I'm just not seeing what the issue is here list index oh minus show every okay I see it I see it <clears throat> so. Yeah, coming back down here. So the issue was minus show every colon. Uh, simple error. Let's just make sure we didn't make that anywhere else. Okay, I think we're good. So let's try one more time. Cool. Okay, so everything's negative 200 here. Uh, not too, too shocking. So... Uh, while we wait for this to do, what, 2,000 episodes, I'm going to give a shout out to my most recent brand new channel members, Mike Smith, AJ Sheeney, Santanu Bomick, and Harv Demand. Thank you guys for your support. Welcome to the club. You guys are awesome. So it looks like uh, we are almost done at 1,500. Wow, that stinks. He like almost made it to that flag. <laughs> Uh, okay, hopefully at this point we'll get a beautiful graph. Wow, look at that. Look at that. What is that? Average or max? I can't even tell. The, I think that's average. Or that's max, rather. Of course it's max. It's the one that's on top. <sighs> I was just testing you guys, to be honest. Um, okay, so we can see here that things are improving. Now, we only did 2,000 steps, so it's no surprise that, um, you know, the max episode was doing pretty good. Uh, but the minimum is still going to be negative 200. Like it just never made it to the flag. Now uh, we could continue. I'm just not going to waste y'all's time and like, you know, graph a super really long one and just wait for things to iterate through. I've actually already done it. So, um, so this is, uh, well, this is a video I was going to show you guys and I'll still show it to you. I'll just leave it in a different tab. And instead we're going to pop over uh, here and I'm going to, let's just full screen this thing. And I'm going to scroll down. So like this is kind of basically what we were just looking at. And then I went a little longer. Um, actually, I'm not even sure. What did I change here? Oh, this was just with an epsilon change. So one of the things that you would use these graphs for is like changing, like how does changing the epsilon uh, decay value change? How does the start and stop uh, episode number change things? all that kind of stuff. And then also you can train a model for a little bit without an epsilon, then add the epsilon. How does that change things? Like you could do all kinds of stuff. Like this is totally up to you what you want to do. So then even after 10,000 episodes, you can see the minimum. Uh, for, you can, like I said, it got in the way <laughs> because it didn't do very good. Uh, but there is a little tick up right here <laughs> where the minimum was at minus 200. But hey, uh, and then again, uh, this was back to changing the epsilon decaying value. You can see how that changed some things. Uh, then here I changed the discrete observation size from 20 to 
40. Uh, and we can see here that at least the improvement is like super linear. Like here you can see it, it goes up but then it kind of flat lines, plateaus. Uh, whereas here, it definitely is constantly improving like to a point in continuing past, or at least we, it looks like it's gonna uh, continue past any other point we've ever had and for the same number of episodes. So then I'm like, okay, let's train it for really long. So we did 25,000 episodes and we can see maybe at least for this setting, the sweet spot's around 20,000 because we can see the, the worst agents were still uh, at least making it to the flag because if they don't make it to the flag, it's gonna be a minus 200. So as long as they eventually make it to the flag, that's pretty good. So for, you know, after about, you know, just before 20,000 to, I don't know, maybe 22,000 or something, um, for 2,000 episodes, we found, or more than 2,000 episodes, I mean, probably 3,000, um, it never failed. It was successful every single time. And then for whatever reason, it starts to come back down again. So um, anyway, so you can kind of see how things change. And then, then from here, you could start tweaking like the epsilon value, or you could reintroduce epsilon, because chances are by this time, the epsilon's not there anymore. So maybe we want to reintroduce epsilon because maybe the, the agent is finding itself in a position it's never been in before. So that value has like never been tweaked, right? So stuff like that. Um, okay, and then here um, is where we start talking about saving for queue tables. So basically it's just a NumPy save and then you can just save the queue table as whatever you want. So for example, I'll just, well, yeah, you could save per episode, but that would be a lot of queue tables. <laughs> so instead what I'm doing here is that modulo thing. So you can, you could decide, you know, hey, I want to save. So for example, I'll just take this, I cut this, uh, come over here. You know, basically you could save a queue table every show every. So you could paste this in, you could say, okay, if you had it, we don't have the queue tables directory, but I made one in the text-based version. Make a queue tables directory, you save the episode um, number, and then you save the queue table there. And you could just do this. So you could do this every episode, you could do this every show every, or you could say if not episode colon, or I'm sorry, modulo 10, okay. And then you could instead save that. So in this case, it would save the queue table every 10 episodes. Uh, so it's really up to you how you wanna do that. And you don't actually need to do that, but you would do that if like, if you graph, so like for example, after I trained this model, it was clear by 25,000, well, it kind of went back to having some failures. So what I would have wanted to do immediately after having some of these failures, be like, no, I want the model at 20,000. Like that's the one I want. Or I want the one at like 20, I don't know, 21,000 it looks like. I want that one. If I hadn't, like, if I only saved the queue table at the very end, too bad. Now I got to retrain, I guess, all the way to 20. And who knows if it's going to look like that again, right? Because there's a high degree of randomness here. So, so that's one reason you might actually want to save the queue table fairly frequently. You probably don't want every episode, but maybe every 10 or every 100. But the other reason you can save the queue table um, is, I'm curious what happened here. Go for 100. I'm not sure what changed here. So we could just use, like, what's different about this one? Um, than this one, unless it's just like doing it again. This one looks really good though. Anyways, I'm um, not sure what changed for this picture. Anyway, um, so once you have the queue tables, this is what I did to generate graphs of the queue tables. So in this case, you could see, I'm gonna say I equals 24,999. So basically episode 25,000, cause they start at zero. Uh, then I just graph the Q table basically. So what we have here is the Q table. Don't forget, I made the observation space a 40 by 40. So for action zero, this is your, um, your all of your Q values basically. Well, not Q values, but basically what I did is if the Q value is the max Q value for each of the possible actions, I marked that, that combination with a green dot. Otherwise it's a red dot. So you can see here, over time, I also probably could have just kept it a green dot, but whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, my initial plan actually was to create a, a 3D chart and then um, and have like cubes basically. And I started to do that and then it actually wasn't as cool as I thought it was gonna be. And then I was like, well, I could just graph like each of the actions and this is kind of what I came up with. So this is at the very end and you can actually see here action zero, that action zero was I think pushed left 
action one, if I recall right, is just do nothing. And then action two is push right. So you can see in these kind of this cluster here, it's like this is pretty much always a push left. And like some of these that aren't push left are actually probably just those are still just left over from the random initialization. And we just haven't hit that combination yet. Uh, it, it's probably what's going on there. Um, and then here, again, I can't imagine many circumstances where you wouldn't want to be pushing one way or the other. I mean, there's probably some, like, as you come up, like, maybe you only want to go so high up the hills or something, like, when you're swinging back the other way. So maybe that's it. I really don't know. Uh, but anyway, so you can see how, anyway, it creates these little clusters, which is kind of cool. And then here, this is I equals one. So basically, after one episode, this is what it looks like. So obviously, it's pretty random looking because it was randomly initialized. So you basically, you go from here to here, which I kind of wanted to see happen. So I have all the queue tables. So then I use the following to basically iterate over all of the queue tables and save the chart. So I just made a queue table charts directory and saved every single queue table from basically from here to here in their graph form. Uh, and then the uh, video code is here. It's the same code I used to make the deep dream stuff. If you haven't seen those, you probably just YouTube deep dream syntax and you'll find it. Um, anyway, it's the same code from that. And then we get a video of the queue table over time, which is pretty darn awesome. So this is it over time. And it goes kind of quick. I didn't really know because the whole video is, well, apparently this one's only 13 seconds, but I think I did 90 frames a second or something like that. But it's not really something I want to stare at for the longest time, but it's kind of cool how you can kind of see how in the middle it like it's obviously starts random and then it starts like in the middle area of all the queue tables and then slowly expands out which is kind of cool um because I, I guess that would be like this is like the cart was in like a slightly off center position to start and so i'm thinking it really is like left is you know left on these graphs and then right is probably actually right on the graphs i could be totally mistaken but that's almost what it looks like and then as he continues to learn, uh, it continues to kind of fill out that entire space. But one thing you'll note is it never actually touches any of these like fully right positions because victory was at, I want to say like 0 0.5, but the action space for that X axis went to 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 or something like that. And I think that's why these never get touched <laughs> because the, the, the car never goes to those positions. So it's kind of cool to, to see it because you can, you can actually see what's happening in the uh, in the example on the graph, which is just kind of cool. Um, and also just the fact that it slowly grows out. And I think it's, again, I think it's slowly growing out because it learns to push itself further and further by building momentum. And I just think it's super cool to see in, in, in graph form. It's like uh, staring at the matrix and, and seeing, <laughs> seeing the picture. So anyway, that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, so uh, feel free to make your own and change the visualization uh, if you want. This is just one way to do it. I still kind of want to make the 3D table thing, but uh, I don't think I will. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I think, yeah, that's everything for now. Um, if you want, you can go to the text-based version of the tutorial and look at the video, or you can make your own video, change the colors, do all kinds of cool stuff. That's it for now. Uh, in the next video, what we're going to do is build our own uh, Q learning environment. So immediately after I learned Q learning, the first thing I want to do is make my own environment. I, I didn't really intend to do a tutorial on that just because I didn't really see why, but everybody's asking about it. And it's like, so obvious, like the first thing I wanted to do is build my own Q learning environment. So I guess I shouldn't be surprised that lots of people want to see us make our own. So, uh, so that's what I'm going to do in the next, uh, tutorial. And uh, the benefit there is that you can, if it's your environment, you can make certain tweaks and changes and like slowly add complexity or remove or, you know, you, you have like full control over the environment. Whereas like with Mountain Car, I can't really make that environment too much more complicated. <laughs> um, I could go with a different environment maybe or something like that. But uh, you, have, you definitely have a lot of control if you can make your own environment. Plus you can start to understand how you could take some like real world examples or maybe a game that you want to make on your own or whatever. So anyway, that's what we're going to be doing in the next video is actually making our own environment and then doing Q-learning on that environment. My hope is I, my expectation is I can do it all in one video. So it's going to be the, the goal. <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. If you want to hang out, ask questions and get 
hopefully probably quicker answers, probably better answers, because it's usually not me that answers. <laughs> uh, join the Discord channel. It's discord.gg slash Centex. Shout out to all the mods and helpers in there. You guys are awesome. Uh, and uh, if you like the content, subscribe. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video.